study people the exercise one hour a day, six days a week at 72% of max heart rate. So if you do this type of exercise, you're gonna lose weight. Some people, the super achiever, this guy who lost 16 kilos, 74% reduction in visceral fat. As you can see here, basically, there is no more visceral fat. Today, we're gonna try to talk about health and well-being and longevity. So what, what do we know about it? So let's start with a survey. So what do you think is an ideal age to die? Do you think you know, that 80 years is OK? How many of you in this room will say, I'm OK with 80 years. I don't want to live longer. How many of you? Please. <laughs> so probably a few, a few of you, they are happy with, with, with 80. And how many of you would like to live 120 years? So one, two, three, four, five, six. OK. And how many for you, of you forever? <laughs> because you know, now we are hearing about these negligible senescence. You know, there are people who are advocating ne negligible senescence. Nobody. OK, so most people, they are happy between 80 and 120 years. But what if I will tell you that you know, you can live as happy and as healthy when you are 120 as when you were 50 or 60 years old. How many of you now, they will say, yes, I would like to, you know, get to 120, but with good health, not demented, you know, depressed, you know, with the cancer, whatever. I think, you know, probably most of you will say, yes, you know, I, I, I would like that. The question is, is it possible? In reality, apart from the animal data, we know these are human data, that 20% of centenarians, they don't develop any disease before 100 years, okay? So biologically, it's possible in humans to live a very long life without you know, developing chronic diseases, major chronic diseases. So that's good news. And uh, now the next question is, but how important are our genes? So this longevity, is just due to good genes, you know, so basically, you know, if we are born in a family of centenarians, then, you know, we have higher chance or, or not. 10%, 50%, 100%. So how many of you think it's 80%, 50%, 20%? Basically, on, these are study on identical twins. So these are basically couples of identical twins. This is a Danish study on three, almost 3,000 uh, identical twins, and around 25% of the probability of living a longer or shorter life is due to uh, the genes that, you know, they have been inherited by, by these twins. And in reality, there is a more recent study on hundreds of millions of people. This is an ans an ancestry public tree study where probably less than 10% of the average, of course, you know, if you are born in, in a family of centenarians, then the probability is probably 50%. But let's say in this room, on average, probably between 25 and 10% is due to genes. The rest is due to environmental factors. So this is very good news, isn't it? It's not due to only the genes, but you know, we have the, the possibility of shaping these environmental factors that you know, are not gonna make us live longer or shorter. Recently, you, know, you hear you know, uh, the, the intermittent fasting, the transient feeding, the paleo, the vegan, you know, high, high interval uh, training, all these fed type of diets and exercise, uh, in reality, longevity, these environmental factors that are shaping our longevity is a combination of multiple factors, okay? It's not only one. There is not a magic pill, a magic fix for health and longevity. Today, you know, in 50 minutes, we are not going to have time, you know, to go in depth in all the mechanisms. Uh, I, I just wanted to, to emphasize that, you know, socioeconomic factors are very important and also environmental health is very important. Even if you, have, if you are the healthiest person in this world, but you live in a very polluted environment, your chance of living a longer, healthy life, they are not good, okay? So let's try to start to look at the signs of longevity. So aging definitely is due to a progressive accumulation of cellular and organ damage 
So basically, as we age, basically we accumulate damage. But our lifestyle can accelerate or decelerate the accumulation of damage. Until probably the beginning of the century, we didn't know it was a black box. We didn't know why we were aging. Most people, they thought you know, it was just a wear and tear process. If you keep using this, this, uh, this uh, jacket, you know, eventually it's going to you know, uh, get destroyed. But you know, then there was this experiment that by this professor in the US, McKay, this is uh, uh, 1935, where just by chance, you know, he did an experiment on rodents, on rats, and he put them on, on, on uh, calorie restriction. So he reduced calories by 30% without malnutrition, with all the vitamins and minerals. And by surprise, this animal lived 50% longer. Amazing. So basically, an intervention that was able to extend lifespan and health span by 50%. I don't have time to go into the details, you know, but there are hundreds of studies that have been published confirming that dietary restriction without malnutrition is extending lifespan in many different types of organisms that you know, we use in, in experimental settings you know, in, in our labs. But uh, when I started to work on calorie restriction in US uh, at Washington University almost 25 years ago, basically there was nothing in humans. Uh, no, no data in humans. There were some initial data. These studies on monkeys, they just started. And as you can see here, this is a study, the Wisconsin primate study, uh, where these monkeys have been randomized to, to ad libitum or 30% reduction in caloric intake. And as you can see, it has been published in Science Nature Communication that there is an extension in lifespan, health span, complete prevention of diabetes, 50% reduction in cancer, 50% reduction in cardiovascular disease, less neurodegeneration, less sarcopenia, and less frailty. Another study, parallel study, at the NIA in Baltimore has been published in, in Nature Communication again, and in Nature, showing that one-third of these animals on color restriction, they live more than 40 years. 40 years for a monkey, is like 120 years for the human beings because on average monkeys, rhesus monkeys, they live 26 years, okay? So we are still trying to understand because the dogma when I started to work on calorie restriction 20, 25 years ago was that only calories were important. We know that calories are important, but the quality of the calories are also very important. And I'm gonna show you some data soon. So in these 20 years that you know, I work, in these 18 years that I work at Washington University as a professor and the co-director of the longevity program, we did a lot of experiments in humans to try to understand if humans adapt to calorie restriction as long-lived animals do. And the answer is yes, we publish you know, this data in Science, Nature, Cell, Nature Review, Molecular Cell Biology, so the top medical journals in the world. And again, yes. Humans are hormonally and molecularly adapting to calorie restriction without malnutrition, similarly to long-lived animals, with few exceptions. Uh, let's be practical. So that's what I'm trying to do now today. So I'm going to use the new, the 2021 dietary guidelines of the American Heart Association. This is the leading cardiological association in the world, and this has been just published in circulation. It is the top cardiological journal in the world, and we're going to use this as a reference to discuss, you know, these, um, how diet is important, diet and exercise. So these are the 10 points of the guidelines. We're going to go through very quickly through them. So the first point is, of the guidelines is adjust energy intake and expenditure to achieve and maintain a healthy body weight. I partially disagree. I will slightly change and say, take action to reduce your waistline and to increase skeletal muscle mass, especially of the gluteofemoral region, by doing endurance and resistant exercise. So as you get older, you don't want to have an increase in waist circumference because if you have an increase in waist circumference, it means that you are in a positive energy balance. You are accumulating fat in your abdomen, and this visceral fat is causing inflammation, insulin resistance, uh, diabetes, uh, dyslipidemia, high blood pressure, cancer, and many other factors. We have clearly shown that. So 
please try to minimize or try to reduce your waistline, to keep your waistline as flat as possible and try to maintain muscle mass as you get older by exercising regularly. So, so these are the results of an experiment of a trial we did when I was working at Washington University. These are 50 to 60 years old men and women, BMI 25 to 30, so overweight people, randomized to healthy life, to, to control in yellow, exercise, these people, they were, uh, 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 there was, the prescription was 20% increase in energy expenditure with exercise without diet. In blue, it was 20% reduction in caloric intake without exercise. As you can see here, we achieved in one year 8% weight loss on average, okay? And that's interesting for the exercise because if you go on Google and you type exercise and weight loss, you're going to find, you know, exercise is not good to weight, for weight loss but to, for weight maintenance. Here we clearly show, you know, instead of with exercise, you can lose weight. But to achieve weight loss with exercise, in this study, people, the exercise one hour a day, six days a week at 72% of max heart rate. So if you do this type of exercise, you're going to lose weight. And in this study, we also do, we did MRI to measure visceral fat, and we saw a 40% 40, 40 reduction in visceral fat in one year. Some people, the super achiever, this guy who lost 16 kilos, 74% reduction in visceral fat. As you can see here, basically, there is no more visceral fat. It is this very bad fat, you know, as I said, you know, it's promoting multiple metabolic alterations. So exercise is extremely important in your life. And regular exercise, not once a week, is not enough once a week. It's like if you take uh, antihypertensive medication once a week. It's not going to help, you know, to lower your blood pressure. Not only we had a reduction in body weight and in visceral fat, but we had a major improvement in glucose and in insulin. So these people, they become very insulin sensitive, lower insulin that is a pro-aging, pro-cancer pro factor, and, and less risk of developing prediabetes and diabetes. Marked huge effect of both exercise and diet. And why is important? You know, because this is a paper we published in Science. We have discovered that, as I said, you know, there are some certain aging pathways and the insulin IGF-1 mTOR pathway is the most important pro-aging uh, pathway that, you know, we have in our cells. Whenever you have high insulin and high IGF-1, you are stimulating these pathways and you are aging faster and you have more cancer, okay? And the reason is that if you have high IGF-1 and high insulin because you have excess insulin resistance, you are inhibiting FOXO that is, tra is a transcriptional factor and you are inhibiting autophagy. Probably you have heard about autophagy. Basically autophagy is this mechanism where the, the cells are using dysfunctional proteins and organelles to digest, to, 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 to provide energy. So if you are in calorie restriction, basically you are using, the cells are using the garbage within the cells to produce energy for cell function. And so basically, if you, if you reduce calorie, you have an increase in autophagy, in DNA repair pathways, in antioxidant pathways, and you have a reduction in cell proliferation, less cell proliferation, less random mutation, less cancer, less cell senescence. So again, we are now understanding how lifestyle is changing metabolic pathways that are changing how our cells are aging. And so we can rejuvenate cells by acting on these molecular pathways. Not only that, in the same study, we show a reduction in cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, an increase in the good cholesterol, HDL, a reduction in inflammation, C-reactive protein. So as you can see, is a wide range of metabolic benefits that you, know, you can achieve you know, with a combination of a, a, a diet that is r with the right amount of calories and regular exercise. And then, you know, we also did some biopsies in the muscle, in the colon mucosa, and we are demonstrating in humans, not in animals, that yes, you know, we can increase uh, autophagy, we can increase DNA repair, and we can increase, and we can reduce multiple pro-inflammatory pathways within cells in, of the skeletal muscle and colon mucosa biopsy.